We are starting our transformation unit, and transformations I know you've learned in uh, grade school. So hopefully a lot of this will look familiar, but what we're going to do in our class is connect all the things you've learned about slides and rotations and reflections, all of those things that we've done, that you've done in grade school, we're going to tie that to the coordinate plane. So we're also going to have some common vocabulary. So make sure you take good notes in this video about the vocab and the definitions. So transformations, I think we know what that is. It's just a creation of a set of values with a one-to-one -one correspondence to another set. One-to-one -one just means every x goes to an x and every y coordinate goes to a y. All right, each value in one set corresponds to exactly one value in the other. Okay, that's what one-to-one -one means. Okay. And remember that a transformation maps a pre-image, remember the pre-image is where we start, onto an image, and that's where we end up. Okay, so congruent transformations, we call those isometries. Okay, so when I say, is this an isometry, I want to know um, when we did the pre-image and the image, are they congruent figures? Okay, so for example, if I drew a triangle and then I did a slide with that, did the size and shape of that triangle change at all? No, that's what we call an isometry. All right, however, similar transformation, that's when the pre-image and the image are similar figures. So if I start with this triangle and then I do that as my transformation, I made it bigger. So now these are similar triangles, so they're both triangles and they're both the same shape, but the second image was bigger than the first. So that's a similar transformation that would not be considered an isometry. Also, as far as notation is concerned, whenever whatever I start with, so if I labeled this point A, B, C, okay, and then I drew my image, then I have to make sure I'm doing the order correctly. So I have to make sure that A connects with this point, so that's what they would be calling P. B connects with that point, that would be your Q. And then that C is connecting with that one, that would be R. Okay, so the order of the letters is important because we have to make sure that A is corresponding to the correct spot. All right, we don't want A to be going over here, right? So um, just make sure that you are careful with the, or the order you write your letters in when you do a transformation. All right, so that's transformations in general. Now let's talk specifically about translations and vectors. So first we're gonna talk about vectors. And I don't know if you've done this or not, um, you will see this in physics for sure. Um, so vectors is just another way to describe a translation and it is a quantity that has direction and magnitude. Okay, so we have a direction or a size. Okay, so a vector is represented in the coordinate plane by an arrow drawn from one point to another. So in this diagram you can see that I started with F and I went to this point G and notice that we have an arrow. So I know that I started from F and went to G because the arrow is pointing toward G. The arrow shows the movement. And then I also have the size of that because I can see that it wasn't just this small little movement. It didn't stop here, right? The size or the magnitude goes all the way to G. All right, so let's talk about the different parts of the vectors. So this is red as vector FG. Notice that this looks like a ray when we did the um, rays of the basic geometry unit. So the initial point is, is just like the initial point in a ray. That's where you start. And then the terminal point, terminal point just means the ending point. Where did we end up? We ended up at G. Okay, so we also have what we call a component form of a vector. And that tells us the horizontal, how far did it move horizontally and how far did it move 
vertically. Since I can't really measure diagonal units, we have to break it up into horizontal and vertical components. So the horizontal component piece, it went five units to the right. That's why we call that a positive five and three units up. So that's a positive three. And you can see how it looks there. And this is very similar to when we graph coordinates. However, the notice that we're not using parentheses, we're using these brackets, those pointy brackets. So make sure, this is a notation uh, note over here. So when I use brackets, I know I'm talking about the vector, the horizontal component point of a vector. If I have coordinates, uh, parentheses, then I'm talking about just a single point. Okay? So make sure you understand the difference there. Like I said before, vectors are used quite a bit in um, physics. You'll use that when you start talking about force and breaking down forces into their horizontal and vertical components. Okay, so we're going to start getting into the um, transformations, and I want you to see how vectors relate to these transformations, the translations. So if you look at A, B, C is my pre-image, and A prime, B prime, C prime, I'm saying prime, that's these little apostrophes by them. Okay, so apostrophes, when I see those, that tells me that that's the image. That's where it ended up. When I don't have an apostrophe, right, a prime, no prime, that means that's where it started. Okay, so that's just some general notation that you can use to help figure out where did it start and where did it end. Now, they also have these arrows to indicate that as well. So that's where the vectors are coming in. So this is saying, okay, if I'm looking at this arrow right here, that's saying that point B started here and ended up right here. Okay, so the vector helps show the movement that, um, that this translation did. Okay, so notice that all of these vectors are the same because if I'm going to do a translation on a whole shape, then all points, all vertices of that shape have to move in the same way. Okay, so you can see if I broke this up into its component form, this vector right here, it went vertically down one, and then to the right, one, two, three, four, five. So the, the component form would be, remember we do the horizontal first. So that would be five comma negative one. That would be the vector form of that translation. Okay, and that just means that all of those points moved in that same direction. I could do this vector down here and get the same components. So now let's use that in translations like we were just talking about. All right, so if I want to define the coordinates of an image, and so here's, the, we're talking about this is my pre-image, and we're trying to find the coordinates of the image, so that means after a transformation has happened. And then they tell us what kind of transformation is happening. The translation, remember translation is just a slide using this vector. Okay, um, a, a notation comment here. This is the component form of vectors, but you can also write a transformation using this notation. So this says we start with the coordinates x comma y, and then in order to get to the image, in order to get to the after the transformation part, we're going to take our x coordinate and subtract 5, and we're going to take our y coordinate and add 7. Okay, so that's just saying the same thing as that vector is saying. So let's do that with uh, point A. A is 3, 2, which I already have graphed. So I'm going to take my x coordinate, which is 3, and I'm going to subtract 5 from it. So I'm going to move left. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's not where I end up, though, because I also have to um, take my y coordinate, which is 2, and add 7 to it. So I need to go up 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. All right, so that's where I end up. I would label that as A prime to show that that's the image of A. So my image of A is going to be A prime, and the coordinates of that, this coordinate is negative 2, comma 9. Negative 2, comma 9. If you are more of an algebraic person, and it was just asking you for the image, you might really like this notation because all you have to do is take our 
3 comma 2 and then subtract 5 and then add 7. So if I do that, then I'm going to get negative 2 comma 9. And I didn't have to do anything visually. If you're more of a visual person, you will like the movement that we just did. All right, so now what we're going to do is talk about lines of symmetry. So we have different kinds of symmetry. We have line symmetry, which I'm sure you're familiar with. Remember, that is just um, when we can, um, a figure can be mapped onto itself by a reflection in the line. So if you look at the letter A, if I were to draw a line here, then this folding, this part, does not match up to the top part. Same thing here. The only way it's going to match onto itself is this part when I do a line of symmetry down the middle like that vertically. Okay, so that's what we say when we, that's what we mean when we say it has line symmetry. And the line of symmetry is this actual line. What does that line look like? Okay, so that would be our line of symmetry. Now we can also have rotational symmetry. So if you think of a windmill, all right, so I can rotate that windmill 45 degrees, I can rotate at 90 degrees, or I can rotate at 180 degrees, and it would still look the same. All right, but oh, wait, no, back up. This 45 degrees, do you see how this one does not look the same as the others? Okay, so it doesn't have the 45 degree rotational symmetry. It does, however, have the 90 degree symmetry and the 180 degree symmetry. Okay, so what's the deal with all the degrees? Well, that just tells us how far do we have to turn it in order for it to look the same, okay? So if you can do that, if you can rotate um, a figure, then um, it has rotational symmetry. And then the center of symmetry is really the center of that figure. So when I can rotate that windmill, um, then that center is our center of symmetry. So let's say I take... Um, well, let's do, let's see, let's do a shape, maybe. Let's do an oval. Oh, that's not what I want. So if I take this oval, can I rotate this around so that it looks the same? So if I do 45 degrees, no, that doesn't look the same as we started. If I do 90 degrees, it definitely doesn't look the same way it started. Okay, a little bit more, a little bit more. No, it doesn't look the same until I've rotated it 180 degrees. So we would say, yes, this does have rotational symmetry, but it's 180 degrees is what we have to do to turn it so that it looks the same. Okay, so let's identify any line or uh, rotational symmetry in each of these figures. So let's start with line symmetry. So in a square, I can cut that down the middle and it would map up. I could cut it this way. Um, I'm going to get rid of those. I could also, in a square only, not a rectangle, but I can cut it this way too because those triangles would match up. And I can cut it on the diagonals there. So this has a total of four lines of symmetry. Okay, now the square also has rotational symmetry. So you see how all these are crossing in the middle there. If I take my square and rotate it, how far did I have to rotate that? Well, do you see how my, my green dot kind of maps out where that is? So I had to move it 90 degrees in order for it to look the same. And then another 90 degrees. So we would say this has rotational symmetry, and we would say 90 degrees. Okay. So let's do the trapezoid. So we can definitely split it down the middle. Can I do this? No, that's not going to work. So I can't do that line of symmetry. Looks like that's the only one. Now can I do rotational symmetry? So if I do that, not looking the same. There's 180. So if I have to go past 180, then I'm not going to have any rotational symmetry. So this has no rotational symmetry, just one line of symmetry. All right, so triangle. Since this is an equilateral triangle, I can cut it down the middle. Well, actually, it might, it might be an isosceles. Let's, let's check that out. 
But if I do that, no, that looks like that would work. And then here, and then here. So yeah, that looks like an equilateral triangle. So we have three lines of symmetry. And then if I try to rotate this, when will that look the same? So like there? Maybe it's not. Maybe I was lying. Because now I'm seeing that it doesn't have rotational symmetry either. Right? It didn't look the same until I went all the way around, did it? So that's looking like it's isosceles. So I'm going to back up these lines. I'm going to say, nope, not those. Okay, it's just isosceles. So it's just that way it's going to map it on. So again, we have one line of symmetry, no rotational symmetry. And then our star. We can probably guess how many lines of symmetry that's going to have. So yeah, through each point. So that means it's going to have five lines of symmetry. And then let's see, can we rotate that? Yeah, so if I rotate it that much. So if you're having trouble, you see like this one, it's not exactly 90. So if you're having trouble figuring out what is the degree of rotation, just take a full circle, which is 360 degrees, and divide it by how many times can you rotate it. So I can do that. One, two, three, four, five. So I can do that five times to make a full circle. So just do 360 divided by five, and that's going to give us our degree of rotation. So that's 72 degrees rotation. Now, how about this circle? Now, I feel like I can cut this circle in lots of, how many pizza <laughs> slices can I make? And that would be infinitely many, right? I could keep drawing these all day long. So I'm going to have infinite lines of symmetry. And then what about rotational symmetry? How far do I have to rotate that to make it look the same? So, yeah, it, it looks the same if I just go a little bit, okay? So we would say this has infinitely many lines of symmetry and infinitely degrees of symmetry within that 360 degrees, all right? And then our last one, notice that I can't even cut this one in half with a line, all right? I can't do anything. It doesn't work. So I have no lines of symmetry for that arrow, and then again, I cannot rotate this either, so... That one has neither lines of, or points of symmetry. So we'll do a lot more practice in class, and please ask questions if you need to.